Hello everyone, this is Jordan from MK Fellows here. Um, in today's short five minute video, I will be talking about the Accrington Stanley game yesterday, um, followed by a preview of Bradford City vs MK Dons on Tuesday, which I'll be going to. Um, yesterday we played Accrington. Um, the first half wasn't good at all. We were really lackluster, very slow with a passing. The keeper looked again very very shaky didn't look comfortable um as you guys might remember in the preview video i did for Accrington Ak stanley uh, a few days ago i mentioned nolan uh, i think it was jack nolan i'm not too sure um as a danger man um he scored against us in the 11th minute um and the play in the build up to their goal was really really poor um he was running across the box um, on the outside and I said to people who sat next to me this is going to be a goal in a minute um, because people weren't tackling him and then it took a deflection and it just seemed like it took ages for the goalkeeper to uh, to dive um, for the ball um, so obviously we went 1-0 down um, the atmosphere wasn't good we were really really poor with our play um, the second half we got better we got stronger um, and in the 63rd minute, Mike Williamson brought on Stephen Wern and Ellis Harrison, uh, to which um, changed the game. Uh, the The atmosphere was better. We picked up the pace. We went after them. Um, and then Jack Payne scored, uh, I think it was a 73rd minute uh, free kick from about 30 yards. Uh, once again, I said uh, when we had a free kick that it was going in row Z because I didn't expect from distance for that to go in. Uh, but when it went in, we were just in utter disbelief. Um, and then on the second half showing in the 93rd minute, we scored a deflected goal to win 2-1, which, as you can imagine, for the Accrington fans, they brought, I think it was 86. Uh, it's a long way um, to go to go back Um to go back to Accrington from Milton Keynes to concede a goal like that as well would have been very disappointing for them. Uh, fair play to them though, uh, loyal 86 um, fans. It's a hell of a long journey and they're not they're quite a small club uh, considering some of the clubs around them in this league. Um, but yeah, we, we went yesterday, uh, travelled from Liverpool on Friday and come back up yesterday and then going to Bradford on Tuesday. Um, and it... In the second half, on the show in the second half, we deserved to win, which was um, really good, really happy with the uh, the second half. The first half definitely need to be looked at, though. That wasn't good enough, and I think the players know that. Um, anyway, that's my Accrington preview. Uh, we've got a Bradford fan who's going to be doing his preview, and we've got Luke Payne as well. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to the Bradford fan. Bye for now. Good afternoon no I don't, I don't even know when this is going out my name's liam uh i am one of the owners of lower league look you may have seen me being obnoxious about your club on twitter at some stage but i've also been nice about you as well so you've got to give me that um i've been asked to answer some questions about bradford because i am a bradford fan um i do try and remain impartial but it's hard so i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i can here um ahead of our game on tuesday which i really hope we win um, so first question, since Bradford last met MK Dons back in October, how has your season gone? Um, it's gone how I kind of expected it to changing managers in a season. You have ups and you have downs. This is a transition now for us. Um, and it's something that when I spoke to, to, to Pete Wild, when we interviewed him early this season, he explained it really well. If you take over midway through a season, it's crisis management because you've obviously sacked a manager because it wasn't going right. So, yeah, Alexander's come in and it is crisis management. It's getting us to the summer. It's finding out which players work, which players don't in his style. And, you know, we've seen players play that we you know, we might not be necessarily happy with. Um, we wouldn't choose them ourselves, but we, we I get that he has to make sure that these players are right for him going forward. So, yeah, it's been up and down, but, yeah, well, I, I think it's what's expected. We've had some results that, we didn't expect we would get, you know, games we've gone into where we thought, God, we're going to get pumped, but we, we haven't. Um, 
And then we've had games where we thought we're going to go into this and we're going to we can walk away with three points and win a game. We haven't because it is it is just up and down, and it's going to be like that until the summer when we can you know get a rebuild and we can push on from there. Hopefully, has it been above or below your expectations? So coming out of the back end of last season. You've got to say that this season has been below expectations off the back of that. You know, we're finishing the playoffs. We lost to Carlisle. Um, yeah, it, it has been below expectations. But coming out of the summer transfer window, it's probably gone how I think a lot of people saw it going. You know, we we, we didn't... We recruited well, but... when well, I don't want to say we recruited well. I don't know. That's not what I mean. We recruited okay. But it wasn't as good as last year's recruitment. Last year's recruitment was just something else. And and look, we had Mark Hughes in charge. I know we had Mark Hughes in charge this time, but it was the first summer transfer window of Mark Hughes last year. And it was like, it was new. It was the massive name in the league and it had a lot of pull. And, you know, we still didn't go up. And that, I think, maybe had a bit of a knock-on into this summer. Players maybe became a little bit harder to, 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 to attract. Um, so, no, coming off the back end of last season, it's been below expectations but if you look at last uh, sorry if you look at the summer it's probably been about where we think we we should be um not where we should be but where we would have been how has former mk dons manager graham alexander got on um again up and down but it's expected i really really like the guy i've been a big fan of graham's for years I, he was one of the managers that i wanted before we got mark hughes um he he knows how to get it done. He reminds me a hell of a lot of Phil Parkinson when Parkinson came into us. Um, the first season, again, crisis management. We actually finished 19th under Phil Parkinson in our first season. So that kind of gives me a, a hell of a lot of confidence that this first season can be up and down. It can be, you know, it can be a lower, a lower finish as long as we don't drop into that danger zone. Um, because next year we can kick on it. And I feel like his style of football is very similar. Uh, it's very direct. You don't necessarily, it's not the prettiest at times, but you know, I'm, I'm very, very open about this. If if we go up winning 1-0 and sitting back for the rest of the game every single week, I don't care. Get us out of this league. So, And, and I believe he can do it. Uh, what can we expect from the main man, Andy Cook? Andy Cook, um, obviously last season, had a season that's just, Every club would have loved an Andy Cook last season. We were fortunate enough to have him. He dragged us, him and Harry Lewis dragged us last season to that, that playoff campaign, and then they did. This season, it's been a bit more even spread, so we have had more players kind of step up. Um, but, you know, when you, you're changing managers, Graham Alexander, you've got to think, is, is essentially the fourth manager we've had this season because we started with Hughes. We then had Kevin McDonald take over as caretaker, then Mark Truman as caretaker before Alexander came in. So, yeah, we... Uh, it's a fourth manager. It's the fourth style of football, and it's it's a big change. You know, Mark Hughes did try to play that pass, play out from the back, pass and move football, which worked really, really well for Cook. Now it's playing more direct, and Cook's having to play as a target man, which I don't feel like is his is his strength. I'm not saying he's bad at it, but I feel like he's he's better at playing off of somebody who's holding it up and playing it through. Because you know, he saw last season what he can do. So yeah, you know, he, he scored. What's happening with Jake Young since his return from Sweden? Jake Young's looked great. Um, there's just a goal that needs to come, and I, he's you can tell he's a confidence player, but he doesn't look short of confidence at all. That first half of the season's done him a world of good. He looked great before he left us on loan. Um, Bradford fans couldn't understand why Mark Hughes didn't play him. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think he's I, I really like Jake, and you can see it in his in his play that he's he's really really matured as a player. And yeah, we've we've done well to keep him this 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 last window just gone. What needs to change to get where the club needs to be? Uh, that's a loaded question. I'm trying to do this in like seven, eight minutes. So that's probably an entire interview that we'd need to, to do. But no, look, no one will agree on it. And I have different views to a hell of a lot of other Bradford fans. But there, needs, there does need to be some investment. We need significant investment in the club to be able to push on to where we, the fans, the majority of the fans overall want to be, which is, you know, top end of League One, pushing into the championship and and beyond being realistic. That's where I think a lot of people would like to see us. We need significant investment to do that. The gap between where we are in League Two and the top end of League One financially is huge. 
at this point. He's he's massive. You've obviously got the odd club and things like that, like Stevenage are knocking about up there. Um, but you know, when you've got your your, your derbies and you, you, you've got well, God, who else up there? You've got your Ipswichers. Oh no, Ipswich are in Championship now. But yeah, anyway, teams like that who were like, who were there last season, Chef Wednesday that were there last season. The, the money's stupid. Uh, Portsmouth up there, Plymouth up there. It's silly money. So. We do need significant investment to be able to get to where we want to be. But to be able to do something in this league, we saw last season, we've got a bigger budget this season than last, but so have a hell of a lot of other people. And that's why it's not really made as much of a difference. So we know that we can get it right. We just need to give someone time. And if we give Graham Alexander the rest of this season, give him over the summer to build his team, we go again next year. I'm, I'm fully confident. If you could take one MK Don's player, who would it be? Jack Payne. In a breath, it'd be Jack Payne. Um, Every single time he's been available since he left us, I've been begging him. Um, I do speak to Jack. I, he scored his free kick yesterday, and I saw the picture of him taking the free kick. I didn't realise he takes his free kicks with his tongue sticking out. I actually sent him a message last night saying, so not only did you score a, a phenomenal free kick, you stuck your fucking tongue out at the same time. Like, what a prick. And so <laughs> I'm hoping he doesn't do that Tuesday. Obviously, he scored against us earlier in the season. I've got a lot of time for Jack. Yeah, I think he's I think he's above this level without a shadow of a doubt. I really, really like the guy. So yeah, Jack Payne in a breath. Predictions for the rest of the season, up and down. It's gonna be hit, it's gonna be miss. We'll have games where people can be, you know, absolutely buzzing with what's happening, and then there'll be weeks where it's it's not great. Look, we beat Wrexham yesterday, who coming into this season were a hell of a lot of people's favourites to to win the entire thing up there with Stockport, and they are up there. Um, but we've played them three times. We've played them twice in the league and once in the cup, and they've not beat us. You know, we've we've beat them twice and we've drawn once. They've scored one goal against us. We've scored three, so I'm I'm happy with that. But then you know we've got Sutton coming up on Saturday, and it'd be just you know it's that up and down. It's the it's trying to work things out. Sutton also a team in transition, so so God knows. But I just think for us up and down predictions for the game and goal scorers. Um, I'm gonna go one all. I'm gonna say Jack Payne and Andy Cook. I think you'll go one nil up. I think we'll rescue it. And that's, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Cheers, guys. Good luck on Tuesday. I don't mean that in any way, shape or form. Me and Kim. Big Kim here. Uh, we don't mean it. So, yeah, take that with a pinch of salt. But, yeah, see you later. Hi, everyone. Uh, before we begin, I'd just like to say on behalf of the MK fellas, thank you to Liam from the Lower League Look for answering our questions on Bradford. Now... Uh, on to my prediction for the lineup, as well as my score prediction at the end. So in goal, I'm going to go with Philip Marshall. I don't think there'll be any changes there. I'm going to stick with Kyron Lofthouse at right wing back. I think he's done enough to to warrant another start. However, that does mean I'm going to put Cameron Norman in at right centre back. We had a very sort of disjointed defence um, against Zacharyton. So I, I think putting Norman in there will feel a little bit more natural. I'm going to assume that Warren O'Hora will be back from whatever his personal reasons were for missing the game. So I'll, help, I'll stick him in the middle of the three, with Dan Harvey keeping his place on the left centre-back. I think he was quality on uh, Saturday, so hard to drop him. Obviously that means uh, Joe Tomlinson will maintain his position on left wing-back as well. Um... From there, I think Jack Payne obviously has to keep his place. And I think it's likely to be Lewis Bate. But I would quite like us to see MJ Williams, like use MJ Williams in that sort of uh, midfield duo. Since uh, Bradford have Andy Cook up front. And MJ, for me, is at his best when he is man-marking a target man, keeping them out of the game. Uh, but... I don't think we'll do that, and I do think it will be uh, pain and bait. Uh, from there, we'll go. We'll go Alex Gilby and Dan Kemp back in the cam roll after his uh, little stint as a sort of centre forward, false nine type thing. Uh, with Ellis Harrison up top, assuming he's now fit enough to start after his uh, sort of half an hour appearance on Saturday. Uh, Basically, I, th I, I don't think you want to rotate too much. I think there's there's players like Dean Lowington that will need a rest. We know he's he's not great when he's not like fully fit anymore. Um, two games on the spin for him is a bit a bit harder these days. 
So I think that's what we'll go with. And ooh, score prediction. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one one. Uh Bradford is a notoriously difficult place to go. It's gonna be probably a dodgy pitch. And we know exactly what they're all about because they've got a certain Graham Alexander in charge. Uh, I'm going to predict uh, Stephen Wern to come on from bench and score our goal. And I'm probably going to butcher this guy's name, Alex Gilead, to get the uh, goal for Bradford. I think we may well end up coming from behind. But who knows? We'll see how it goes. Come on, you dons. Just, just